from a tour of Europe. Uh, you, of course, you included a visit to your son in that trip. How's this sounding? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. I wonder what kind of support you've managed to rally for Julian Assange throughout Europe, and whether or not any of that support comes from people who might have uh, any sort of significant say in the case. Well, you know, it, while in Europe, I, 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 <laughs> I try to get their support. The, the, the WikiLeaks, from that perspective, from Europe's, but from the European perspective, is European publications. You, WikiLeaks was first registered in France. It fought its first court case in order to publish in France. The the publications went out through De Spiegel, El Pair, Le Monde, and The Guardian, all European publications. The, uh, uh, the staff are Europeans. So from the European perspective, this is a, a, an intimidatory act by the United States to restrict the publishers, publications, and journalists. But the intimidation has already happened. It will probably cost, I, I don't know, I'm not an accountant, but it will probably cost $10 million to fight Julian's case for the next three years. This is already intimidatory because uh, ordinary journalists uh, can't do this. It's impossible. Public, public, publishers can't cope with this sort of deluge. Um, Publications can't do it. Very rare to be able to fight this battle. Uh, as I travel around, so in Stockholm, uh, uh, I had a meeting, or in, well, I better say we, we had a meeting in Parliament, and they, uh, uh, MPs came and publicated their, their major newspapers came and did interviews and so on. And we, we had a a march down the main street of Stockholm, 350 of us shouting the usual things of uh, uh, what, what we do. Uh, uh, no extradition, the only right decision. Well, so, no extradition, the only right decision. Yeah. So that, that was good. Uh, in Oslo, we had strong, Oslo was a very good action. Uh, pen and uh, a group of people put on something like we have here tonight. In Italy, very strong, two meetings in Italy, at the highest level of government, the chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee is a supporter. Um, uh, they're setting up a cross-party committee, exactly the same as here in Australia. In Germany, a cross-party committee, um, and we have uh, had one, two, three visits to Germany. They have a what the Germans call a manifestation, we call an action, in uh, Dusseldorf, Berlin, Cologne, and Frankfurt every week on Wednesdays. So we had a, a, a uh, in the Bundestag, we had a meeting that had, had um, funny though, it was an important, the house, full house, lots of uh, MPs uh, and MEPs, members of the European Parliament, uh, the leader of the largest union group, and powerful people, but no report, no reportage in the major newspapers. <laughs> so it's, uh, that, you know... Uh, not even voices? Uh, no, no, not, n nobody. Uh, that, it's sort of okay, because uh, the, the, the real strength comes from the conversations of us, and we don't have newspapers. We use Facebook or Instagram or something. So that's the, that's what we hold up, Julian, by our conversations amongst ourselves, dinner parties, picnics, um, where we reveal to each other our attitudes and our, and the, and swap information and amongst healthy people as we are here. Yes. Having the information causes you to act. And, and that forces governments 
and forces MPs to pay us attention as they are now doing. In Cologne, in, in Cologne it was a, a small group, I mean half the size of this. Um, a church group put it on um, and it was about, went for about an hour, lots of questions. <laughs> reported in every major newspaper, so there you go. The, the, the parliament doesn't get a run, but the local church group does. <laughs> and, uh, where else did we go? Dublin was good. Um, they, had, and they were very enthusiastic. I didn't have to, so I just mentioned in the same style as I mentioned here, the British judiciary. <laughs> and they ran with us. <laughs> Um, so they had a long experience of the British judiciary. Um, uh, Very long. Um, I went somewhere else. Oh, and I went to Brussels, um, and we had a, a good. There was a hundred and forty uh, attend. No, sorry, two hundred and forty attended there. Eighty uh, MEPs or eighty officials, you know, MEPs and leaders of unions, the leader of the French Union who embraced me and said I'm going to go and insist that Macron gives a Korean asylum. So I'm very strong. Um, and uh, that was, uh, who else was there? Oh, there was an oddity there. Matthew, who's an MEP for the Brexit party, so he's like right over there on the right, 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 right. You know, but he, and if he walks a little further, he'll fall off the edge. <laughs> and, and, uh, so he, he attended and uh, gave me a, a hug and, and he said, you know, go, whatever I can do, I'm there. But um, so that, that was, uh, um, you know, in this game, I learned a little bit, you become politically agnostic. Because all you want is to get your son out of the, you know, somebody from the left. <laughs> and Uh, politically agnostic is quite a good segue to my next question, which is going to be about Australian support for Julian Assange. Earlier we heard Philip Adams talk about his amazing petition, the fourth biggest so far ever in Australia, and it's still growing. Uh, Philip Adams also referred to a parliamentary support group for Julian Assange, and I'm not sure if everybody here is aware of that group, but it is a bit of a motley crew, you might say. We have uh, two members of the Greens there, Adam, Adam Band and Peter Wish Wilson. Uh, also two cross, two independents, Andrew Wilkie's there, Zari, uh, Zari Stigl, and uh, but also Barnaby Joyce and uh, George Christensen, two members of the Labor Party, and I forget who else. Uh, we've also had some other prominent Australians come forward in support of Julian Assange, including Kerry O'Brien, of course veteran ABC reporter, widely respected, and we have had what you might call political prisoners free before, and they, they have had intervention from people in government, I can think of, the, let's say, uh, David Hicks in Guantanamo Bay, uh, Timothy Weeks, James Rickardson, the filmmaker um, from Cambodia, uh, and also, I, I'm sorry to say, I forget the name of the nun, who is recently returned home from, I think it's the Philippines. How significant are recent developments here in Australia in support of Julian Assange in terms of the movement for his, towards his freedom? Do you think we're getting closer? Well, I just had a, a, a thank you. I just had a chat with Philip Adams and, and he uh, says that uh, they can't they can't give the, all their questions that they uh, hold up, uh, come unraveled. And that now we are making the run. We hold the, well, I suppose the socio-psychological high ground. Um, with uh, Barnaby, he crossed the floor for Hicks. Um, yeah, so it's an interesting, I mean, he has a particular view, and he, he has the political courage, but he's good for us because Barnaby's got a terribly loud voice. 
but it says to reverberate. Um, so it's really good. The, the group that uh, are together, I've met them all, they're all good men. I, I like particularly like, I, mean, I find George Christensen, who is on the opposite end of the political spectrum to my leanings, I find him a, a charming companion. Uh, you know, I spent some time in his office. He apologised for not, for doing so little for Julian, um, and uh, said, "What can I do?" Describe. You know, we wrote a letter to Maurice Payne. Um, so, are you just you know us together? It's us who are against the the. Uh, that you use the expression powers and be, but it's us that force the issue. Um, and, but, and we bring Barnaby along with us, or Peter Wish Wilson, who's a, a lovely man and very similar in political leaning to myself. Uh, and we will force the United States and our government at the highest level to negotiate. Uh, to bring Julian home. Yeah. 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 Thanks for answering my questions, John Chipton. I'd like to hand over now to Jim Beetson, who I may also acknowledge as one of my mentors. <laughs> Hi John, uh, what's the state of uh, Julian's mental and physical health right now? Oh, this, this, yeah, this, um, well, uh, uh, it, his health is not good. He, uh, he lost 15 kilos, he's pretty skinny you now, um, and not very strong. Uh, He's taken it upon himself to get a little better. So his cell is about three metres long. So I think he covers that in four strides. He like, so he's walk, walking from, uh, I, think, I think it's from Paris to Nice. Anyway, he, uh, he gets the number of steps and the, the kilometres from major cities and he walks up and down his cell uh, in, uh, uh, you know, to get well, get to be you know, physically well. Um, Mills's report with the two doctors on, on Julian's well-being and psychology eliminates nine years of persecution with a increasing intensity. Ceaseless, there's, you know, the thing he faces constantly is that it's endless. And now it looks, he also in a, is 175 years, so it's endless, it's ceaseless. There's no end to it. And that is a psychological pressure of the greatest kind. He knows his room in the embassy better than you know the back of your hand. Every crack, every little paint peel, every thread hanging off the curtain, he knows as intimately. That's his entire horizon for seven and a half years. He's become really attached and concerned and worries about his friends. Because, uh, um, yeah, anyway, he has become very, very, very concerned. So, I'd like to um, describe a bit more. The, he, he suffers from, you know, depression, so he's in a pretty dire circumstance overall. I'd just like to quickly give you an insight into Julian Assange and WikiLeaks that uh, um, uh, shows their, you know, even the, the terrible circumstance that he's in. He, um, 
So James Rickardson was in a cell in Cambodia with 140 others. It was a little about this big. Um, they, they sleep side to side, touching this one toilet. Um, he rang, he, he sent an email to Julian, and Julian answered within two hours. Um, when the uh, collateral murder video, um, you saw all those men uh, murdered, slaughtered. Um, and the children. Julian uh, agreed with Christian that they put names to these people. They were, had families, you know, mothers, fathers, uncles, children. So Christian, at the risk of his own life, this is really important, at the risk of his own life, went to Baghdad and negotiated to go into Seda City, where the men were from, and to give them names, these people, um, and also interview the relatives of the two Reuters journalists who were killed. And they only managed to find two names. It's really important, you know, to name the dead. Every town you go in Australia, little towns, they have an obelisk in the centre. And I'll have 1914 to 1918, and a list of the dead. Really important. Shows that in WikiLeaks there's a deep compassion. Yay!